show other than Ralph. Ralph here, <laughs> chomping, <laughs> chomping away. I thought, but it's on the. I know. People don't turn this shit out. <laughs> Good. Well, I, I could just maybe I'll just go on there and put them on the website. Maybe popular already. Which one you worry about? No. I, I don't know what else I would say where we're at. That's right. always a unique question. Uh, but the usual, usual. I think we were discussing the formative power of the pathologos. Mm. Size and power. Yeah, it's size, right? The scope of it. You brought up the size of it. Yeah. And then he had mentioned. Uh, can I share our discussion? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, he had mentioned on the way home last night how he was singing, and he was in a very playful, creative state. And he had noticed that he had never thought that way. He never thought to play with words like that. And since he had just mentioned that the pathologos um, shapes the very way his thoughts connect together, that and I, I concluded then that since he had had a pathologos talk and was outside of it after the talk, that the pathologos shapes the way that his ideas come together. And now he was in an open state and. Yeah, these ideas are coming together in a different way. Yeah. Um, Josh brought up the idea that um, oh, that our path logos shape and have an impact on every single part of our lives. Like, the way we stand, the way we talk, the way we set our goals. The things we notice, you know, that is true, that is true as well. And then, um, and then, yeah, then I had the thought about um, how I notice a different way of... I noticed a difference in the way my, my mind was going from thought to thought. Like it was... A, it was a different line of, um, like, improvis improvisation. Mm -hmm. uh, I, was, I was being playful uh, last night, just kind of playing with ideas and musings. And uh, was that on the drive home? Yeah, yeah, last night when I was driving home uh, from the dream to, tour. To, to what do you attribute it? Well, Josh made the point that that's what it's, that's because I was free of a pathologos. So that's How do you do that? I guess our, our dream analysis and uh, gaining a greater awareness of the, the drama that goes in in the, in the milieu, in my family milieu. Mm. Which I guess led to me dropping it to that degree. Oh. Yeah. Find that curious? Yeah. 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 It, it's interesting cause, because I didn't actually do anything. I just stopped doing mm. something, and that just emerged. Mm. you attribute in some way that, that change to the dream work? Yeah, absolutely. Why would that have any effect? Well, I, I think of it like the pathologos is a restricting force on the mind. Mm. And dream work puts a light on that. Uh, so then, to whatever degree I, it puts a light on that, to that degree I'm free to use my mind mm. freely. Mm. So, like liberation. Liberation. Like an uplifting. Yeah at the same time purifying. Yeah, purifying is a good one. Yeah. And then even generative. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> Well, <laughs> should we shed a tear over your change? Oh, yeah. I don't know how I'm going <laughs> to get over this, <laughs> this grief. <laughs> I like that one. Should we shed a tear over your change? It's okay. good stuff, dream work. Mmm. Mmm. Yeah. How'd the dream go? I got, a, I got another koan last night. Oh, <laughs> by chance, did you bring it along? Yes. Well, shall we look? <clears throat> Can't look, but can listen. Good. So Pierre jumps out between two cars and says, Justice implies insight. <laughs> I don't understand the word implies. Uh, English is not my first language, so I have difficulty with English if I need help every once in a while. I, I didn't, I didn't, I did not send the koan, so... Uh, no, 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 we're just wondering about the koan, that's all. So I need to know what that word implies. What is it, coincide? No, no, that wasn't it. Implies. Yeah. What does that mean in that sentence? I th thought about that, actually. I think it means... Um, Uh, maybe another word would be entails or presupposes. Yeah. Did that help? No. Sadly, no. I was hoping, though. No. Then I'm not the, the, the regime. No, it didn't. I think it might have gotten a little close, like from the outer 100 ring to the 93rd ring on your way to the mark. Okay. Say more about it. In terms of the teaching grading, you know. <laughs> in terms of the statement itself. Quite complicated. Improvement. I mean, I, what, what can I say? I've been puzzling on it all morning. No, no, no. We don't mind that. We're just talking about words. It's okay. <laughs> come on. Take the next place. Justice, Just come on. We move from natural to <coughs> plates. I like it. Justice. Justice implies insight. Hmm. And he leapt out between two cars. <laughs> what did he leave out? You leapt out you. between the two cars. Sorry, this, guy this is your message. The or two this cars. Is between two, from between two cars. I, I'm adding from, but I think the exact was left out between two cars. Pierre, sort of, well, it's not like you leapt or jumped, but you kind of moved out between two cars and said, see, I was worrying about whether it was a Toyota Corolla or a Honda. I, I couldn't get the make. Well, that's the, the whole dream changes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> In the dream, you were worried about getting the mate? I'm just being, said, I'm being oh. facetious. Well, they're moving Pierre, cars? Pierre, Pierre comes out between two cars and says, justice implies insight. That's it. Okay, by the way, what effect did it have you in the dream? I woke up. I don't know what that means. Meaning I, I, I'm lying in my bed now in, in the waking state at, at no, right no, after that. But that deals with when you're waking up. I just wondered what happened yeah. in the dream when you I was got hoping that message. You were... what, what was that again? I'll, I'll help you. 
It was boring. It's kind of like the little dream we did last night. It's it's a sense of it's a at the same time two things. Um, I'm instantly puzzled, and I'm also overjoyed. How, how, uh, I don't understand how those two can go no, together. No, that's okay. Uh, how much over? <laughs> well, if you had not asked, I would have overlooked it. <clears throat> but now I realize at the time I was very happy to get like the assignment. What? Uh, like what? Yeah. Uh, are you one of these people who have had past experiences with happiness? Yeah. Oh, do you have more than one? Uh, if so, where would you put this in respect to all of those others? It cannot be described. I don't mind. Go ahead. <laughs> um. Um, bliss and mystery all wrapped up in one. Um, then where would you put it among those? A sense, a sense of what? There's, there's no better. Even though it's an utter mystery, what's just been asked. At the same time, there's a sense of there's no place I would rather be. Oh. Okay. So it's not the same thing as being bored? No. So I knew right. I suspected that. Um, um, uh, by the way, um, Is it possible that you could focus on what happened when you got that message? That moment when you got it? I'm not, I don't understand how that's not what we've already been doing. It's, I'm known as someone who asks very foolish questions. I can tell you why later, but I, I won't do it okay. now. That's a good promise. Right. I, uh, I get the sense that there is, I'm holding back somehow from a... Yeah. Hey, you. From um, what could be fathomless profundity. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, well, we know that. <laughs> but you, you're cutting through it, though. Yeah. Yeah. 
So you're just saying you want me to put more words on it? Like what is that moment of being given that question or that statement? Um, it hit me like... Um, Um, well, there's another aspect of it which, I mean, I, oh, hello. Um, there's another aspect of it which is, uh, I, uh, empty, um, up one. Well, before I said indescribable, but I was talking about the happiness of it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But there is also an instant um, nothingness to it, too. Like, like just a... Wake up. Mm -hmm. <sighs> but I can't put any... That's it. I can't put any... There, there's no... Uh, by the way, was that the uh, um, insight? <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. I was going <laughs> to... Thank you. My, my notes. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. nice. He keeps notes, so I want to be oh, yeah, formal some. about this. Yes. Right. But we were talking last night. I, I, I put a question to you, which is, uh, can both of those states exist at the same time? And you responded, you know, can you... Can, could you be in the second, for instance? And just be completely clear about. And you said no, they're incommensurate. They, you know, they're right? mm -hmm. totally different things. So that would mean that the two senses that I gave you must have had must have happened temporally. They had. They could not happen together. Maybe the happiness that I was describing came afterwards. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Consequence. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Which is why you kept uh, pushing for... Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, well, what do you think of doing? To ignore dreams would be, um, or to, yeah, well, to ignore dreams would be to, uh, pass up on the deepest, richest, best yeah, yeah. gift. <laughs> Are you quoting something from Pierre? Yeah. That's yeah. why he's laughing. Yeah. Would you deal with Barbara's question? She asked, where did they come from? <laughs> yeah. Did you come up with that term, Dream Master, yourself? Or did, did someone else? Is that a Pierre Grimes invention? Just to capture uh, it? Discovery. Or discovery? <laughs> These are the things I've come up with. <laughs> yeah, I did. Yeah, it's there. Okay. That's kind of a small. As the great Chinese philosopher once said, "So what?" Mm. Go ahead. Mm. Well, because. Um, By the way, his name is so what. <laughs> yeah. yeah that's but, it. He said that's everything. 
I guess, I, what motivates that? I guess because with such a long, rich, Hellenic tradition. That's true. That has been all but destroyed. But in, in what small amount remains, we don't yeah. see any no. reference to that question. Or do we? No, I've never seen that word or that expression. Or the, or the question you asked before that, which is where yeah. they come from. There's a very fine book. I had it years ago. I don't know where it is. You know. Even I may have, whatever happened to it. But in any case, I believe it was a Bollingen Press series. And it was a study of ancient physicians and the kind of situation they worked in there. And there was a, just a beautiful picture of a stone, a ship, it looked like a ship, but it was all stone. And it was in, set in a stream, and that was the hospital. Hmm. And they just had that one primary principle, no treatment, without first looking at the dream. Hmm. I mean, that was just accepted. Right? And of course, among the rocks, there's nothing that tells us anything about what they did, how they did it, hmm. how successful that was. Do you remember where? Yeah. Do you remember where? The stream, the ship, what? Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, um, yeah, yeah, no, no, I don't. Uh, mm. It might have been a, a book on Parmenides hmm. earlier. Hmm. In that area, southern Italy. Hmm. But, huh? Yeah. Well, we read in the Dark Places of Wisdom that they had those people who called themselves, you know, sons of Apollo, and you know the that they were doing dream work, and so it seemed to indicate that they just attributed it to the gods. You know, like that, and. I've been reading Proclus and his description of the gods and the different types of gods and the guardian and the uplifting and the uh, purifying and the uh, generative aspects of that. Like, that seems are to me like they are, belong. Are you in the theology? Oh, no. Elements, yeah. Elements, yeah. okay. And so, because and there's a description of that in the <coughs> theology. Okay. Did you uh, hear that uh, Don Balboa last night, you were asking him what figure it would be that yes. was... Did you hear he called himself a Kuros? Yes. And a Iatromantis, right? Which is what? from the Dark Places of Wisdom. I didn't know because you didn't respond directly to it. So that's why I was curious. And I had passed him that book because there have been... Some, remember I made that comment, yeah. I accidentally ordered another one, and then you returned me mine, and so I realized I had two, so I gave one to him. Anyway, I just, because that, because Kuros is, the, the thought in the book is that it's, that's what Parmenides was. No. And so he actually was giving himself a pretty high name. No. And Iatro Matis, so it's an interesting choice for him, I thought. Mm -hmm. not, it's not like Juliades. The maker of holes, right? So, I thought that was interesting. Slash destroyer. So, uh, yeah. and, and of course in there they talk about, what, what I was going to bring up is, you know, they do say there was a, a place where the um, doctor, where the priest did the dreaming for the people. <coughs> did the dreaming for? For the sick people. Hmm. I, I hope I never said that. No, you didn't. It's Thank in the you. book. The book the, said it. The dark places of wisdom. They some places oh, they yeah. some I places they dream for themselves. Yeah. But some places they they the priest 
apparently thought they could dream for the people, so the sick people, and come back with a dream that would enable treatment. So it didn't say how. I would have been fascinated because I know we make a joke often. You know, why that? Are you sure, sure you didn't get that guy's dream? You know, or with housemates does. Does Jeff get a uh, seance dream, you know? No. <laughs> but this is like priests going and dreaming for the person. Interesting. If the priest is a diviner, right, in between, like a mean term. I'm not saying it's impossible, but I, and you're putting forth a theory. I was just struck by it, you know, the mm -hmm. fact that they... It would have been nice to hear an, an explanation mm -hmm. of... Sure. Theory or practice, what was going on other yeah, than that? That seems to be what's hugely missing. <laughs> like a giant gap in the traditions. It's one of the dark places. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> it must have either just been so openly discussed or known that they didn't have to write it down, mm. or it was secretive and mysterious, and they're like, we shouldn't teach this shit to anybody. Like, we don't want to give this power out to others. You know, like. How could it be missing? I mean, like... The mysteries... Well, mystery schools were... I mean... Mysteries. Yeah, I mean, for very, right, esoteric, very good, important reasons. Mm -hmm. I remember when... Do you remember when you brought up the Dream Master at an Esalen? I think it was at an Esalen, anyway. Or when you brought it into Esalen, there was just a huge outcry. You know, people were... From some people, right? Yeah. They were going, what? Yeah. What? And so it's interesting that you say, did nice. he... Did he discover it? Because... It was one of the sticking points. Right. A lot of people thought it was like their mind shifted. Well, it was a good yeah. thing, right? Yeah, some were very upset. <laughs> You're making it into a deity? Well, that actually kind of is my question right now. I was wondering if mind of God is a synonym for dream master. Well, why don't you keep wondering? <laughs> I think... I think Dream Master is a synonym for Mind of God. What do you think of that? <laughs> Give us your reasoning, though. Because I, I don't want to be easily persuaded, yeah. right? Yeah. The same... The Mind of God functions providentially, and the Dream Master functions providentially. So if something functions providentially, I don't really mind what logos you want to use to denote it. Whatever logos you use to denote it, Dream Master or Mind of God, etc., is going to function in such a way that intelligibility and benefit come together in a way to benefit the subject. In some ways, I am totally on your side. I love the idea, but... But I had no butler's coming back. <laughs> yeah, but uh, okay. keep going. No, well, I just thought, you know, I mean, one could be the gopher for the other. You one know? could be mm -hmm. the gopher for the other. One, rather than being equivalent. Mm -hmm. Right, so the dream master would be the gopher for the mind of God? Well, I guess. Well, see, the thing was, the other reason is we use mind of God as, right, demiurgo in, in the functions with the demiurgos. Right. And in the Timaeus, for example. Right. And so then it left me wondering whether you meant that the Dream Master also had that function of bringing about the creation of the cosmos. Yeah, because that would be a providence because from disorder they brought order. See, so he can help you answer the question you had last night because he has both the physical and the metaphysical coming from one uh, source. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. Sameness is not the same thing as equivalent. Right, right. Even though I thought Jeff might buy into it yeah. and therefore argue for yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. Put it would solve his problem of the inadequacy the, right, of the it. first hypothesis. Good. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but, by the way, rolls add, add to that. <laughs> Second time he rolled his eyes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. I should keep track of those. Is so it possible that... If, if you add to that, it. Mm. that... How many people are present on the Earth today? How many billion? Seven, roughly. Six, six seven. Dreams come every 90 minutes. So if a person has four or five or, like last night, nine stages, 
it's likely that they come every 45 minutes or would be, in any in any case would you agree if everybody's having a dream every night the dream master is very busy <laughs> but wait a minute that's any intelligent being in the universe yeah now, how many places might there be where intelligent beings are Barbara a lot oh by well, okay then multiply <laughs> seven seven billion by a lot and yeah. it comes out to be many yes <laughs> that gives some more uh, credibility to uh, to Kevin's uh, well because the, of the scope well uh, it gives a plurality now whether it includes scope is something else this added precision, mm. right? And from precision, you might get scope, but that's a. Uh, well, what about the fact that the Demiurgos looks upon the world and sees that it's in chaos and thinks that it should bring order to it and it thinks that reason is and all you know always better and more beautiful than chaos. So he looks upon himself. And he creates the world in such a way that those things can be most like himself. And the Dream Master creates, looks upon our world and sees chaos and things that uh, hmm. reason and, and uh, reason would be all in all places better in our soul. So it embeds within us a dream to make us more kind of like unto itself. Hmm. Mm. So what are we so saying? I'm on your side. So, Demi like Ergos is, <laughs> so are we saying that Ergos is the cosmos as Dream Master is to what? The soul? At least soul? Yeah, at least, right? Oh. Mm. So let me check. <laughs> what is it? Uh, well, uh, I think it's a... Uh, um, it depends on how you want to use language or like how much ca categorizing you want to do. Because I think in a way it's true that it's this, like, you can make the case that it's the same, that the Dream Master is the same as the, the what did you say, the mind of God? Um, but then it's like you lose the the distinctions surrounding the dream master, surrounding dream work and right, which is why I think we changed it to an analog analogy, right, with the, between the demiurgos and the dream master, mm -hmm. so that they weren't the same in, in terms of equivalent. Mm -hmm. They had a sameness in terms of functioning but not equivalency, if I can put it that way. You know, I wasn't sure I understood, or I am sure I didn't understand what you meant by scope. Yeah. What did you mean by scope? Well, I added, I added more information to the idea of the Dream Master mm -hmm. in terms of uh, taking a look at what would be the number of dreams in any one night everywhere. Right? So that added precision to the idea of what the Dream Master may be doing. Uh -huh. right? right, right. That's adding precision to that idea. Yes. That is, it took the idea and related it to a many. Mm -hmm. It went from a singular to a many. Mm -hmm. Now you can look at it and say, what must what must follow from that a general statement about mm. its origin mm. right uh, where is it all going mm. uh, is it possible it may have had a beginning uh, where is it going in the end how is it functioning in the middle that's scope mm. Mm. so it's always fun to go precision to that's a very interesting question. Yeah. Well, I mean, the, the Demiurgos, you could say, like, how many places in the cosmos are there things that it is constantly contemplating such that it maintains order in the same way that the Dream Master is constantly, with seven billion people, producing dreams every X number of minutes. It's the same sort of 
continued contemplation that sustains it. I mean, I, I, I'm still agreeing with you guys in the sense that I, I, I guess they're not synonyms, that, they, that they're not equivalent, the dream master and the demiurgos. But it's like every time you say something about the dream master, you can analog, anal, analogously uh, uh, look at the relation and the function and apply that to the terms between the demiurgos and the cosmos. The question would be, do you want to expand it or leave it on that level? <clears throat> I think it'd be good to get scope. Mm -hmm. Oh, for the especially for the well, dream wait. master. Uh, but is it possible that you would also include daydreams as a function of the dream yes. master or not? Yeah. That was a question for me. Well, how would you deal with it? Or maybe like for the assistant dream master. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> daydream master. Well, well they're working it, longer I hours. I think we have to be precise. <laughs> more frequency. Well, well then, they're working longer hours with more frequency, but the dream master in that he can call upon the whole palette of someone's experience, right, and history, and create this, you often called it multimedia, uh, uh, multimedia, what, expression of your, of your present situation, including the highest possible experiences possible for man. And then you look at a, a daydream, which is in like an encapsulated... Uh, pathologos, right, right, mm -hmm. right. With so that it just seemed like, the, in one way, your your daydream is working with less. I I only mean less in terms of it's not drawing a. Well, is it? Is it like a condensed? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Um, what, what? How do you stand on this? Some somnambulistic like state is a daydream, right? And so sleepwalker. Yeah. So I'm wondering, is that? And he said, is that a function of the dream master? It, so I think it is, but. Uh, but if it's somnambulistic and the dream master is awake and waking us up, how can it be responsible for us sleeping and it's set, uh, sleeping to ourselves? The same way it's responsible for us sleeping to ourselves when we're sleeping. But it's not responsible for pathologos, right? Pathologos is what creates daydreams. Oh, it's responsible. Pathologos isn't involved in the creation of a dream? No, no, no. I said... Uh, path, uh, I said... Go ahead. What, what, I guess what I'm trying to understand is that... So we're saying dream master is not only responsible for the logos of dreams, but also for the pathologos of the daydream, but I thought we were responsible for our decisions and our, our, ju our conclusions. So it's like... That, sir, is a pathologos. <laughs> you're asking Whoa. if Sorry. daydreams, this somnambulistic-like state, can be a function of the dream master. That's the question, right? You put in somnambulistic-like state. What, I want to know what a daydream is. What, what's what is a daydream? Like daydream? I don't I don't I don't understand English like you. I don't know the word daydream. Can you be more precise? There are five different kinds of daydreams, and the question is, how how similar are they in terms of their condition to be similar to dreams? Right. Right. So. What is it about dreams that we would say we can agree upon is the very condition for dreams. Hmm. Right. Agree that they're personal. They're personal? Right. And can't you say they're, in a way, spontaneous? Th right? Therefore, they're not subject. We, we have not designed them. Oh, uh, we have not designed them. Right. right. So spontaneous also means, on this point, we didn't generate them. Right. <clears throat> That's right. Right. Yeah. Mm. Could you also say that they also have a curious thing of bringing up to us things that we never could have guessed about ourselves? Yes. Um, is that just sufficiently frequent to say that appears to be the very nature of what a dream is? They dream? Dream. No, dream. Yes. By the way, if that's true, what would you say about daydreams? Keep the same things in mind. Mm -hmm. Personal. Personal? Aren't Tangent? they all... Is that a tangent daydream? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm just thinking of the five, di type, five different types of daydreams. I don't know if that was the question. Well, yeah, that's, uh, we can do that later. Oh, the, the spontaneous 
uh, spontaneous. spontaneous, right? So um, personal, right. spontaneous in the sense that we didn't generate them. Mm. I don't know mm. if that's true, but that that's what would apply. And then the third one was that they bring up things that we never would have guessed that we needed to look at. I don't. I paraphrase that, but that was. That's I think what he said, then, in essence. And therefore. Do well. I don't know. Do you? Do we think that we that that daydreams aren't self-generated? From what is being said, would you answer your own question? I have to decide if I think daydreams are self-generated to answer that question. Pardon me. Did you not agree so far that the elements of a dream apply to daydreams or do not apply to daydreams? The two of them, I agree. One of them, I'm not sure. Which which. Is the one you're not sure. Self-generated versus spontaneous. Well, how can it be self-generated if it if it brings to the surface something you never thought about yourself, unsuspected? You could generate the daydream in a path of logos, and have it's a path of logos, and then not knowing that your pathologos through reflection is going to bring up what you need to see. So it's, it's self-generated. Pardon me, that's not self-generated. What you just described, it's not self-generated. Okay, then because at least the, the person thinks it's self-generated because when you have a daydream, it's like you are choosing to fantasize and go into something mm -hmm. that is allowing you to escape what you really need to challenge yourself on. So it's like, in that, in that sense, you're self-directing it like, oh, I don't want to be here. That doesn't meet the conditions. Okay. Okay. So then you're making it a condition then and it's not self-generated. You added a feature to it. You said uh, one of the motives for, for daydream is to escape something. Right. Uh, to avoid something. Right. Uh, I did, yeah, because it's that, the high. That's your, right, that's what you're bringing to it. It's it my understanding that from, from in our studies, what has been shown is that the daydream is the high of the, that the pathologos state is blocking you from achieving in your goal so that instead of actually achieving the goal that the daydream allows you to get that that high state without actually doing the work to stay there. So the question is whether or not that is an episode in daydreams rather okay. than its purpose. All right, okay. Okay. Function, purpose. Okay. And this goes back to the self generated okay. question. So okay. the only way to deal with it would be to say, since you can generate it, please generate one now and let's see. I was, okay, I was thinking about doing something else right in the middle of you saying that sentence. Mm. I did it on purpose because I was trying to self-do it. I was trying to do it. I was trying to say, okay, right now in the middle of your sentence, you're challenging me to do it, so I'm going to stop paying attention to you and I'm going to start thinking about something else. By the way, it, did you say it's a way of avoiding something in order to get high? Essentially, is that what you said? If so, yeah. if so, you haven't stated that feature in the daydream you just presented. Right. Right. It, it was like self-contrived. It was just contrived. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's okay. All right, so fine, okay. All right, so daydreams and dreams. Spontaneous, self, not self-generated, and bring up that which most needs to be seen. Of course, but in order to have a rational discussion of this, it would presuppose that people can bring forward daydreams and classify them and see whether there's more than one class of them. Right, well that's second. what you were saying a second ago. You said tangential daydream was one of them. Mm -hmm. What else did you think of? 
Wait, before, wait, before we list them, I want to get Pierre's second point. You said first, you can list them, and second... Pardon. Good news the first. Your point just now okay. was that the first thing we can do is classify them. We yeah. can put them in classes. Right. And the second thing we can do is... Oh. Mm -hmm. Then you have to see, once you do that, whether or not you can find things that are common among those classes. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Which is, you're looking at some one thing, and you're breaking it up into divisions, and finding those divisions, and finding what constitutes the divisions, and therefore you're in a one-many process. Right. This is a dialectical. Not? Right? And when you do that, then you have to then come up with something that's not only common, but can uniquely define it. And therefore, you've demonstrated a point by uh, uh, finding, after your analysis, the divisions and the evidence that supports the division, and therefore you're proceeding rationally. <coughs> As you described that whole process, I don't suppose you had any one or any time in mind, did you? To what? As you described the whole process of yeah. moving through that, thinking yeah. about those classes yeah. and getting so precise, did you yeah. have any one or any particular time in mind? Like, has it been done before? Did you do it? Sure. Uh, would you like to run us through it? No. <laughs> no, I'll tell you why, because... Uh, You're going to be getting the part manager. No, no. See, it requires data mm. so that you can follow the point. I mean, why believe me if, I'm, if I set out certain divisions and count them and label them and give names to them, and yet I don't have the substance for each one called material or data or evidence? But so, you did when, at the time that you did this. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I, I once was part of an Esalen group, and we used to do things like this. But uh, going back to the... But it, to, for someone to say they generate them themselves, which is the issue on the table, right? Okay, yeah. Uh, Is it possible that one can generate themselves and yet not violate the first principle? Nah. Which is going to be that it's going to, it's going to present something about which mm. you do not know. Mm. Right. right. And second, the, the important thing about a daydream as compared with a dream is that its occurrence occurs at a meaningful point, which is mm. predictable, mm. depending upon the daydream. Yeah. But which is part of what makes it so personal. Yeah. But to an oh, sorry, I think Barbara got in. Go ahead. Well, Go ahead. but back on your first point, I, I like your first question a lot, which is, um, is it possible is it still possible to save this idea that it could be sent from the self without the self necessarily having mm -hmm. uh, known that ahead of time? One way I could see that being possible is if we have levels of self. Sure. And one level is not aware and sure. the other is. Sure. And so it's the higher level self selling a, sending mm -hmm. a lower level self. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And in that sense, self-generated and yet unpredictable, ignorant, at the same time. I like time. that. It's on my side. <laughs> well, and also like Is that what you were kind of get, getting at? Sorry, Josh. I mean, would, would that satisfy as an answer? Well, it depends upon the kind of daydream, you see. That's uh, why we had to classify them, I think. Uh, well, there, there are times when people set a stage consciously to sit back and engage and indulge in a daydream. Right. In which case, it's very likely hmm. 
that that daydream is something that repeats itself. Mm. So that is, it, it, the range of subject matter is not un, unquestionably variable. It's mm, rather, yes. it's rather well defined within certain parameters. Well, I was so not. That's the, you know, the spontaneous well, like daydream. The therefore, daydream. one can get into it, yeah. but often there are uh, features within it that, it that surprise the person. Following a certain pattern. It's, yeah. Well, I was not with the group in these days, but I have heard from others that in the old days, one of the exercises you used to have us all go through was that we would um, meditate for a while, but uh, bring with us a pad of paper and a pencil. Um, and try to meditate, but when uh, a daydream comes in, uh, briefly write down the content or what pulled you out, mm -hmm. uh, and go back to meditating again. Mm -hmm. And each time a new daydream comes in, mm -hmm. write it down, but begin mm -hmm. to notice those patterns. Um, and yeah. I, I tried that exercise only once, but when I did, um, uh, it was fairly, I found it surprisingly easy to pretty quickly categorize them, and I only got five different patterns. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe there really were even less than that. Yeah. Um, I thought it would be mm, a lot of different things, 10, 20, 30, but it really was a small class of things yeah. that even then I could see sure. the, the, the similarity among. Um, is that the kind of thing that you were just describing, where you were saying uh, you could sit down purposefully and in and indulge them and look at the patterns? See, um, there's a difference between uh, daydreams that occur when you're engaged in something that is not intellectual, a well-defined intellectual, and those that occur under similar circumstances but are not intellectual, such as uh, if you ask people to get engaged in some philosophical work where they have to then challenge themselves to master something and if something interrupts that that's invariably a daydream that's going to be different than the kind that occurs when you are just sitting and watching whatever the mind is doing and something interrupts it okay Mm. Uh, different how. Yeah. Um, and, and therefore they also take on a different form. And equally well, they're also what are called uh, a spontaneous generated symbolic dreams. That is, when someone describes something that you have a, a kinship with, hmm. and out of that material you identify and take off on it. That's equally, by the way, a therapy that was uh, done in Germany for several years, which the therapist would just say, uh, put the person in quietly and say, okay, now uh, I'm going to introduce a story for you and you follow it and you enter into it and make believe you're acting it out. And so the therapist would say, all right, you're going on a... A mountain trip mm. and it's a nice day and the sun is shining and you have no worries and you find a trail and you decide well that's a good trail to go along mm. and so you you're, you're going along and you find you you it's a very brisk day and you enjoy the walk and up ahead you notice there's a turn in the road <laughs> and you make the turn in the road and then uh, at a distance you see what, what may be a, a, a tree house and uh, So then, you know, that's one, one spot, okay, then they're attracted to maybe even climbing uh, a hill, a, a gentle mountain as it were. Then any difficulty they encounter is their own difficulties. And therefore the therapist would then say, oh, okay, you're stuck. Uh, look around, there's some way you can find a way around that obstacle. 
And so the person then would seek alternate routes in their own daydream of how to overcome obstacles they're experiencing in the daydream. And those are the same kind of obstacles they face in their everyday world, so they're acting out ways of solving problems which, which, according to their own design, would inhibit them and block their progress in, in life. It's like a self-induced uh, growth mechanism because they could just simply wait. I'm sure it would come up in their daily life anyway. But it's like if you have nothing better to do, you might as well go see your therapist and have him induce you on this story and go check out that tree house and see what the... Would you still say the Dream Master, right, has to show you? Well, see, now the issue comes, the things that's most important are where you are stuck. Yeah, but it would be coming from the Dream Master, right? Well, okay. It would... Uh, the person would be stuck and therefore they would reflect their own path logos. And since they didn't choose it voluntarily, then it must have some other origin. And so we can hypothesize therefore, uh, it's similar to dreams and the introduction therefore is something unknown, particularly important to themselves and how all the other categories fit. Hmm. Remember you used to take us through some of the workshops, you'd say like, so what is your goal and what are the steps to reach your goal and then you'd say what's it like when you reach your goal yeah. and then you would ask us to describe like what happens then after our goal right. and so in some way you know it like suckered me into like thinking I was succeeding and then I got to write down what would happen as a result of uh, as succeeding and invariably in the result of succeeding was some belief I didn't know about success right. Right. or some belief I didn't know right. about uh, myself and what it meant then that I had succeeded or what I would do with my success yeah. and so to that extent it still contained a logos sure not one that yeah. I was conscious of in fact and unpacked a yeah. unsuspecting belief mm -hmm. and even though it was us consciously trying to yeah. come up with our best vision yeah. of, of ourselves succeeding yeah. and that was another one like a conscious unconsciousness or yeah. I don't like to use those words it's but that means, though, that the mind is always <clears throat> communicating with us. The mind of what? The dream master or God? <laughs> Not this one. <laughs> the, the individual mind. Right? Noose. Like, no, noose. noose. Okay, noose. noose. So, yeah. would you say the dream master is most simple? <laughs> would you say... <laughs> You're writing a paper here, I like this. Well, noose. Noose is translated as mind, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Capital M. And intellect, I guess. Or, or intellect, capital I, is that, is that, is that right? Or well, intellect. Right. Okay, so, mm -hmm. I mean, in one way, God has intellect or possesses it or functions through it, and the Demiurgos does too. Scope, precision, what are they directed towards? Yeah, they have a different scope, huh? Really Can I ask a parenthetical question? Meaning, not directly tied to this point, Kevin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. No, no, it's parenthetical. Mind of God, is, is, is that Cronian mind? Insofar, is that Cronian mind? And if it's Cronian mind, doesn't that mean it's the object of the Demiurgus contemplation in the creation? This is an information question. Sure. So, and that's, well that suggests there isn't, that the Dream Master cannot be the mind of God, if mind of God is an object <coughs> of contemplation, that par the paradigmatic. Upon? Well, it's yes. a paradigm, right? The yeah. idea of the mind. It's a paradigm. Yeah. Well, hmm. well, no, the idea in the mind of God is the paradigm, right? Now, that was the question, see that? I couldn't, okay. break, I couldn't break through to it. So, the, so then likewise, well, even that you can build on. Like, if that's the case, are you comparing 
you're saying the demiurgus in contemplating the idea right which makes him the demiurgus of goddess so in contemplating so the then idea. there would have to be those parallel elements if it's a strict analogy right, right. So, so then so the dream master would be reflecting upon the idea in the mind of the dream master uh what one more, one more time the what well, the, the demiurgos would be turning around, reflecting upon the idea in the mind of the, itself, the self of, of, the de, of, of God, the, the idea. It, that's the paradigm, right? Uh -huh. From that model, there's a copy. Uh -huh. So, to the dream master, would be reflecting upon the idea in that's its the question. mind and creating the copy from that model. Yeah. Does that work for you? It does, because of the scope because the object of the demiogros would be the cosmos and the object of the dream master would be our soul, for the lack of a better word at the moment. Yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but yeah. our infinite number of souls producing dreams every 90 seconds that are specific and personal to the person and to the, time, the person's contextual life, uh -huh. the context of their life, right? Mm -hmm. So that isn't a single paradigm. I mean, that isn't, that's like... I mean, are you saying it's a paradigm for each? I mean, I so have in to go producing back your towards dreams, oneness, right? I have to well, go back towards oneness. It would be a single paradigm of, uh, of justice and goodness, and, 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 we'd, and we'd all be going back to this. But, yeah, you bring up the question of, like... Personal. Personal, yeah. Mm. Right? No, it, it's a... It, I don't know. I'm with you. Mm. Because you're right, it's like... I think I've heard it said before, like, it's great, divinely beautiful, but it's like, if it doesn't matter to you somehow, it doesn't, if it's not personal, so what? So there is this... Right, while the scope of the mind is pervasive, its precision is always directed towards what is personally significant. So there's this pervasiveness and this precision. That's how I always have dealt with it. Well, two things, at this point, you'd have to say now, each dream is a creation. Mm-hmm. And therefore, there are as many creations as there are dreams. Mm. Yes. Right. And, when and in terms of the demiurgos, that plurality is only in terms of what is possible. <coughs> but the fundamental, fundamental idea of creation as a demiurgos is that whatever is possible will in fact be. Mm. Hmm. So anything that is conceivable, there, oh. there must be a, a universe that's created in view of that, since it exhausts all possible creative moments. Hmm. Cool. Right. But, yeah. But that's one vision that's going to function, ideally, on the, on the issue of necessity. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Whereas the daydreams are individual dreams that are equally necessary or have a necessity about them for the spiritual growth of the individual, mm -hmm. rather than working out the implications of any possible design within the realm of all possibilities being created. Hmm. That's, why, that's why the Greeks were so, so curious. Uh, uh, Waldorf invited me for a talk at Waldo. Mm -hmm. um, I thought I'd try this on my grandson, so <laughs> um, I said, hey, you know, the Greeks have a curious idea, and that is, uh, I said, do you agree or not that they had the idea that space is unlimited? Uh, do you think so? I think there's a wall at the end of huh? this dark space. <laughs> there's a wall. <laughs> or at least Trump's trying to build one. Wait, 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 different, different reality. So, do you think, by the way, time is unlimited as well? 
from what I know and I could see. I mean, you think time is okay. infinite and it's, it's expansive? And, yeah. Or do you think there's a beginning and middle and end to it all? I don't think there, there is those things, this beginning okay. and end. So it's infinite? Yeah, and it's just kind of like... Just like space? Space, uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. Then would you agree that it's conceivable, <clears throat> given the infinite dimensions of space and time, that there could be another universe completely remote from us, both in space and time, created by another god? And we would never know it. As a matter of fact, that would indicate, given enough space and time and being infinite, there could be an infinite number of gods creating an infinite number of universes and each one would be different and separate and distinct from each of us and from each of them. But they would all have similarities. Well, would one of them be no. my universe? No, they don't. Of my pathologos? Be, they don't have to be similar. What? Would one of them be my universe of my pathologos? Because of infinite possibilities. That's right. Then, well, yeah. I was just wondering no. how it played out. No. Hmm. no. So, I said, uh, the Greeks got upset with this idea, mm. so they developed a myth, and once you understand the myth, it'll solve this problem mm. entirely. Okay. Oh, by the way, do you go for the idea that if there is a God that created, he must have had an idea to create? No. Oh. Huh? Ooh. <laughs> what, what do you think? Good question for him. Yeah. Uh, Do you think you could have created all of this without having an idea? No, yes, he needs an idea. He needs an idea, yeah. I'm just kind of, I'm just kind of all eyeing. We're like, hey, how did he get that idea from? Like, like uh -huh. where did that idea originate? By the way, do you think that idea would be separate from God? Though it would be within him. Uh -huh. Would you agree then that if uh, something is separate from you, it could either come after or before you? Right, so the idea came before. Agree? Agree. Agree. You could either produce it or get it some way, or it could have been existed before, and you're making mm -hmm. use of it. Mm -hmm. And by the right. way, mm -hmm. would you agree if there is such an idea in the mind of God, there must have been a cause for the idea? Definitely. Same with us. Not the God that creates, because he's creating something. Mm -hmm. Right. On the basis of that, so there must be a cause for the idea in the mind of God that must be greater than the idea, as well as the person who's creating, using yeah, the idea. Yeah, that which is like prior it. to the creator creating. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, by the way, the Greeks thinking this way, they realized, therefore, there are three major gods. Hmm. Zeus, who's a creator god. Hey, Kronos is the idea in the mind of God, and Uranus happens to be the origin of of Kronos. Therefore, hey, Kronos is a father who gave birth to his son, and his son is Kronos, which is the mind of, the mind of God, mm -hmm. and he in turn created Zeus, who mm -hmm. then used his ideas to create. Mm -hmm. Well, one day, uh, among the gods being what they are, <laughs> uh, Kronos decided to uh, end this business, and he cut the balls off his father, Uranus. Hmm? And uh, <laughs> Zeus heard about it and he decided to cut the balls off of his father. <laughs> now, in terms of our myth now, would you agree? No infinite Uranus possibility. Uranus could not generate any more ideas. That's right. And since Zeus cut the balls off Kronos, there couldn't be any more. Uh, Zeus's creators. Creators or minds. Or minds. Or that have designed. That's true. Agree? Yeah. And that's the reason why the Greeks myth of Kronos. Uranus, Kronos, and Zeus. And Zeus castrated one another. Except Zeus. And that ends, mm -hmm. the, that ends does it not the myth? The yes. idea that there could be many universes, many gods, and many remote places in the universe. That's right, just the one that Zeus makes. Are they all sterile now? All yeah, now, they cut yeah, now there's, there's well, only Zeus one. Is, Zeus isn't sterile, but he only has one idea. <coughs> right. He's a one idea guy. Right. <laughs> Therefore, there could only be one idea of God? Yes. One creator? <laughs> yes. That's it. That's it. Hmm. Yes. 
Excellent. So this mm. was, <coughs> I thought it would be a good idea to bring this to Waldorf in education. And bring it into the classroom. Did you really? You get to bring, bring pictures now, now that you know you it's a good pictures. idea. <laughs> yeah. 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 Medical so, boys, cut the balls off your dad. No, <laughs> you can have Brad and the other side. <laughs> Make yourself an only child. <laughs> Today I learned how to cut your balls off, Dad. No. And why? Are they you over there. <laughs> <laughs> what was Gavin? Was, did Gavin have a recorded he, response? He really enjoyed it, but I decided when I went to Alder if I'd do something else. <laughs> I did that with him. Mm. He, he's into Greek mythology, so. <sighs> Hmm. So there could be an idea in the mind of the Dream Master, the paradigm of perfection, one of the one of the kinds of gods, right? Must. I'm helping. You. I'm trying to help. Yeah. You. Okay. So a paradigm of mankind, towards which we are moving. That's right. Without that idea of perfection, there could be no model rational model. Yeah. So does it like does it matter to us that or does it make a difference to our argument if the dream master in contemplation of this is able to craft for each one of us uh, individual dreams that reflect our blocks to that achievement? I didn't get the question. Well, no, no. It I was trying to see if I could support his his yeah. Comparison yeah. and to what degree? Yes, yes. So I was asking myself, um, the dream master then would have a paradigm. The paradigm of the dream master uh, is that t perhaps towards which he looks when he creates our dreams. Although the stuff which he makes our dream out of is our r realm of past experience, right? That must include an understanding of every possible block in every possible way, under any condition. Hmm. Uh, we're slipping back towards infinite multiplicity of be able to identify its root, mm. its cause, mm -hmm. for the person's liberation from them. Mm -hmm. Therefore, it's an amazing amount of art. Yes. It's a true doctor. Oh. Right. Does it make it a never an art form, get the analysis form. of dialectic as Proclus understands it cause and effect? I mean, is that part of what the Dream Master is doing? In understanding cause. Yes. Sorry. I was trying to I'm still I'm working. I'm with you. I'm following, thank you. I'm still on. Oh, I was looking at we had one kind of dialectic, um oh. many one 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 out of many, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Which is definitional. Right, according, isn't it? Definition, he says, you look at many particulars, you arrive one. So we had five dreams, kinds of dreams, and we're going to arrive at the sameness, right? So then, when you were talking about the dream master having to have um, the notion of cause and effect in mm -hmm. one's life, in one's... Mm -hmm. Then, um, I was asking you whether that fits the description that Proclus gives of analysis the definition. Uh, pardon me, demonstration. See, that's the one I was missing. Demonstration. Because I thought, okay, I'll have to, yeah, fine, okay. Yeah, that works. I didn't have anything for demonstration, so I'll have to go back and see what I misread or left out. No. Cool. Pro, yeah, Proclus. Yeah, Proclus is a catastrophe. Proclus needs help. <laughs> but So then can we use him at all? We're making that analysis. <coughs> <laughs> Barbara can tell you exactly the fault in Proclus's understanding. But, uh, 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 uh. <laughs> I can't? Hmm. From what you just said. Well, you would have to apply that to the, par the first hypothesis, right? No, I don't know. There, no idea. I know embarrassing it is, but Were no you idea. dealing with the question of cause? We were. Yes, and that that's a demo mm. to show cause and effect is demonstration yeah, yeah. of progress. And the idea of what kind of reasoning fits the idea of seeking causes and seeing their relation to effects 
in terms of the so-called four goals of the dialectic. What kind of reasoning? And it was suggested, therefore, a demonstration. Is the name. But you were uh, shocked came to the realization that there was something missing in Proclus's understanding of these four ideas, and that was the idea of demonstration. Well, right? unfortunately, yes. So yeah. therefore you oh, were able to spot the weakness in Proclus's oh. understanding of the idea of demonstration and these four ideas of the dialectic. Of course, though, my problem suggested that was my reading, and I yeah. was going to go back and read <laughs> it. Yeah, yeah, it's like, yeah, you blamed it on yourself, yep, right? Yep. But maybe you were seeing it, right? Yep. Mm. It's curious, it's beautiful. And yeah. Jeff is going to do the same thing, by the way, since he's in, into Damascus, Damascus. I know, problems and solutions. easily check to see if there's any references to that. Uh, to what demonstration, or to cause and effect? Or demonstration. The, the, well, there are four ideas in the dialectic. It's called definition, demonstration, right? Divisions, Divisions analysis. analysis, and how they relate to an ongoing dialectic is the subject that some of these weird people are doing on that Parmenides group. Right. We just recently yep. went through the. F uh, did by the way, did. Um, did you all complete that work? Because I don't remember it. I remember Pierre giving that as an assignment uh, recently, last week or so, but I don't remember it being picked back up oh, it's in picked subsequent up. talks. It's been picked up in subsequent talks, but no, we haven't completed it. We right. mastered the whole thing. But hmm. unfortunately, all the tape machines broke down, hmm. and yeah. so there's no actual record. We were hit with amnesia as a side effect to flu and, wow. Well, <laughs> <laughs> Only Pierre recalls the dialogue in question. <laughs> so perhaps if you posed a question to him. <coughs> well, there's a two or three different ideas in play right now. True. But I think what they all have in common for me is the original question I had when I listened to that Parmenides talk where you introduced the possibility of looking through the first hypothesis with those four in mind, which is um, really two-part. Um, well, what where did that idea come from on your part? And what did you, what, what idea? the idea of exploring uh, the applicability, like is, is this what Parmenides is doing in the first hypothesis? How much of those four uh, can you see? Oh. Uh, and where did you yeah, think? Our subject like, is, been, is different since the group has had plenty of experience on trying to understand each proposition. Right. We now are raising the issue of, is it possible to understand how he thinks, what strategy he has in spelling out whatever it is he says in the first hypothesis? Has to be that. Is there some order? Is there any principles underlying the way in which he proceeds to his conclusion? And I think... Because of that, yeah, yeah. right, now that we're talking about the inner working of his thinking, Yes. And he's featuring the idea of the dialectic. That's the purpose of, of the Parmenidean hypothesis. Then we have to see in the idea of dialectic what are the major concepts. And the major concepts in the working with the uh, mm -hmm. dialectic are those four. Definition, demonstration, division, analysis. So can we find those four in his thinking? In his thinking, in his yes. presentation. Can we find well, we're, we're so slow <laughs> that we're taking our time. We first have to see whether or not it is true that the fundamental uh, principle in his reasoning is that he wants to show how the idea of one in self can be understood. And therefore, he's going to talk about each one of those ideas when they're brought together into a unity 
but he's going to take them separately, and therefore he's going to reason about the one and then make corresponding points about the self and repeat that design all the way through the first hypothesis. And Regina did a remarkable nice piece of work going through them all, and she came to the conclusion that there is evidence that that's the way he reasons. And uh, we want to see what other kind of subdivisions we can make within that because there may be places not only where he separates one and self, but also combines them, making combining comments and conclusions. And then we're so, going to have a Proclus roast on the end. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. And so right now we're still, we still want to verify among ourselves that that principle of order is present. And while we're doing it, we can possibly look to see whether this other thing is present. And so, luckily enough, uh, Julie Hargard happened to have a copy of uh, that very work, Parmenides by uh, Proclus. And there's two, two major sections in that work dealing with these four ideas, and she made Xerox copies of it. Ah, yes, thank you. Ah, thank you much. Oh, right, yeah, okay. the wrong thing. Oh, here it is. That's right. So that was that was just uh, just yesterday, oh. right? And so that's what we're doing. Yeah. So, no, we haven't gone in detail, but it's I presume it's promised somewhere along the line when we confirm the idea that there is that general design of the comparison <coughs> between the one and the self repeatedly, repeatedly throughout that work spacing itself out appropriately with a subset of ideas. Sorry, well, because see, we couldn't do that before because we, you know, we weren't satisfied with understanding it, but now we... Mm. So now, now you want to go to the next yeah, level. And now with this new way of looking at it with more precision, <clears throat> we can even look and see if whether or not there are grounds for assuming the use of the word self is appropriate here or there just by considering these arguments. Right. It's letting us make finer distinctions in our use of the word self. Yeah. Right? We started yeah. with a... Right. You know, and we've been, like, making finer distinctions and really coming to what might be a Greek's idea that it has those... always has a choice of four. Yeah. And you have to decide mm. what, what meaning... What are the four? For us... To, hold on one second. And so you have to decide... Um, how the reasoning of the passage goes in order to determine which of the four, which are, mm -hmm. they say it means self, primary. Okay. Um, this is what I'm with it. Self, capital S, is that what you're talking about? You're starting at the top? Well, self. You go on the top, start at the top? Uh, I don't know. If, All right, go ahead. I'll yeah, I, self. Because we're talking about Greek primary. thought. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. So, self, they say in the oblique cases, which means when it's not the subject, it can mean he, she, and it. Got it. Or them, of course. But um, then, third, it has, it's what they call an intensifier, which means that it, right. <coughs> that it, like if you want to say, Elder, you know the guy, the very guy who, Got right? It. So that's the very, that's the way in English we intensify. So that's the third one. The last one is uh, re what they call reflexive, that refers back to the subject. And so you get, uh, okay. I myself. That's I, blah, that's blah, blah. Okay, okay. that was a different answer than what I was expecting, but I understand what you mean. The four yeah, different Yeah, it's kind of a boring answer in one way. I see what you mean. I thought you meant how the Greeks thought versus, but you're thinking about the Greek grammar. I'm thinking about the meaning of this term right. as it occurs in the context right. of the Parmenides. Like we're looking at the reasoning that what right. Pierre is calling the thinking, right. uh, same term for me, of Parmenides, trying to see clearly how he reasons, and that leads us to the conclusion that sometimes one, uh, like, oh, sorry, same as the other one. When you use right. it with the article, it means same. And so just last time, we were seeing that in some passages, even without the article, it seems to be a, I'm going to say lower level of self or same, uh -huh. right? Mm -hmm. Have the meaning of same, right. mm -hmm. self-same. Mm -hmm. okay. So we're kind of, that's a bonus in a way to our analysis of the thinking mm -hmm. is to see how so they're using this then? word. No, it's, I, I, I screwed up. When they say self, right. they also, it's self, comma, itself, myself, yourself, itself, or self, blah, blah, blah. But, but they, self is the first meaning, not any the of the self. particular selves. Right, mm -hmm. so the self, then oblique, right? Right. And then um, 
Then it, uh, intensifying. Uh -huh. Oblique. Yeah, right. Intensifying. Right. And where do you put the, and the same, um, goes the in, same the last, in the last, last one? Fourth. Okay. Yeah. And the last yeah. one was the, what did you call With it? With the article. Um, what did I call? Oh, I called it, in the text passage that we were looking at, it, we were kind of playing with the idea that rather than self in all its Glo glory, okay. yeah, or at its highest level, oh. on its purest sense, uh -huh. this could be self, but not uh, like meaning, self meaning I'm calling, I think we said lower. And so you're pushing the wrong person about this. See okay. if Pierre will agree to it. That'd be my strategy. <laughs> Okay, I just want to say something before I forget because this is important to me. Because I like what you're saying and then also I'm trying to use this to understand self, idea of self, selves. I'm trying to understand the metaphysical unfolding and the terms as they unfold in that way also. Dealing with the obliques, dealing with the intensifiers. And what does it mean when it's an oblique and intensified versus same, right? And versus the self, like clearly the mm -hmm. self, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe I'll email you because I got a couple things I'd like to put in. But I think you should email Pierre. But I, I, I'm happy to look at it. But Yeah, what's it, what's it doing here? Mm. I just have work to do, that's all. Pardon? I have work to do. And I want to do it, like, right now. Mm. I want to run home. I want to open up the book. And I don't want to stand up until I come to a conclusion about my question. Because it's there in the text. Yeah, how long will that last? How long will it last to get it accomplished? I mean, you described very well. I honestly the, the think impetus. I could do it in a day. Sat down, focused, did it. You could do it in a day. Is that what you said? I should. Not a should. Oh. I will. A will. I am going to. <laughs> what, what? Uh-oh. We're losing breast support on that one. <laughs> um, did you sneak in hope? Uh, no. No. I, I did sneak in going to to make it back into the future versus present. Simple I am. Uh, well, I am going home today and I'm going to do a wisdom lecture, but it's like I have to say to myself, what's more important to me to do something I feel comfortable about or to go in with a question back into the Parmenides and try to figure out something that I'd really like to solve because I've already got the other one mapped out on the board it's there and I'm not going to lose it so why don't I what stops me yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I guess I'm going to find out when I get home because now instead of doing what I was going to do today the wisdom lecture stuff I think I've had this <coughs> question. Pardon me. What kind of stuff? What, what? I had a, another goal. Which was what? Uh, I have. I told you I have the symposium mapped out, and I'm going to start recording and taking people through the Greek text. But to be honest, I'd rather do it with the self and the Parmenides right now, as opposed to Plato's symposium. As if one's more important than the other, I don't know. I don't want to give up one goal for another great goal. Do both. Take both, right? It looks like it's caught in a conflict <laughs> between two, two goods. Yeah, I just do both. Got to take both. Oh, good. good. Yeah, I learned that from a fellow along the way. Yeah. Yeah. But, but do you always go for the higher in the past when you have such choices to make? I haven't always gone for the higher, but I try to now. It's doing something to Because, yeah. What? We're, we're <laughs> it's beautiful. It's divinely beautiful. Yeah. yeah. And it makes my mind real in awe. 
at the overwhelming beauty and I look at I want to be the best I can and if I am not doing that it's just a simple question what's blocking me and why am I not and it's a challenge and it's meaningful and when you approach meaningful goals that are fundamental to the self it's it, to me it can be emotional because it's so meaningful and so it's also so beautiful so it's like in if I think about the separation I'm sad and I think unity if I think about the unity I think about beauty and oneness and I still cry but they're different states of mind it appears you're, you, though you've reached a certain plateau with the symposium, is that correct? For the moment, yeah. 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 So I should go back to the other question. What? I should go back to the other question I was talking about with Barbara. Do about, that. About the Parmenides. Yeah. Yeah. But you've reached a plateau then with the symposium. Or, re or finished it. I've called it a plateau. It may, may not, maybe finished it, not a plateau. Because you were talking a moment ago about sharing your views with... Well, I, but you said the other day, don't forget the last sentence of Socrates' speech um, in the paragraph right before the last, his last line. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, I remember that. So yeah. I actually haven't gone back and done that part yet. So I guess no, I'm not satisfied also with at the moment. Mm. Lots of work to do. Yeah, you got two, yeah, yeah. You got two, two, yeah. I could I could add a long list of work. Yeah. I got it grows yeah. every day. I just gotta do one thing at a time, that's all. <clears throat> as if I don't know. As if I I don't know. All I know is, is that I'm going to go home and come up with the answer to my question and run it by you or the group at least so I can get it off my chest. I'm tired of dealing with it. It's uh, I'm pregnant, I guess, right? I'm pregnant. Pain's painful. Birth it already. Pop it out. Squeeze. I guess I have a, uh, your use of language, and like considering that painful, is, is uh, difficult for me to understand. What do you mean that it's painful? M maybe Frustrating, I guess. Oh. Frustrating. Like, I'm, like, the goal's there, and I'm here, and I want to be there. So you look at that difference? Yeah, yeah, but now I have to understand why when you have that position you just described, why it would produce frustration. It, it produces frustration only when I am being blocked or you're being blocked. Mm. It doesn't produce frustration like when I'm on the path and I can, I'm going and I see myself achieving it. That's not the frustration. The frustration is when I feel that I have not lived up to my challenge in some way and that I am not doing what I need to do. That's frustrating. Yeah, so, you know, I'm tired. I'm just going home. I'm not going to sleep tonight until I have an answer yeah, to the question. Yeah. yeah. Are you going to uh, choose to look at the symposium then to clarify that gap? Well, first, I'm... Mm. As well as then, then the Parmenides, or I'm probably going to go Parmenides first. Oh, but but you already have the gap with the other. I've seen, you know, I've seen this same question with the self in in the speech with the symposium, so I could use both of them, I think. Good, good. Be interesting to see how it goes. Okay, okay. both. Yeah. Oh gosh. Okay. Especially because it sounds so interesting. If 
the gap is the cause of the frustration, then if you walk away from the gap to another project, it sounds like you're setting yourself up for frustration. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. That's what you were thinking? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got something on his chest then. Yeah. Right, so, so I'm right. Like, don't walk away from the project. Am I following you? Well, the, it just looked from the what y your logos that looked like it was an interesting conclusion to come to to go home and work on the Parmenides. Given Versus your logos. symposium? Versus symposium, yeah. It's, it's definitely both, though. I mean, because you and I were talking about the Parmenides, and then I also have the same question with the symposium. I see it functioning in both places. Hmm. If I answer it with the symposium, I could then compare it with the Parmenides, and vice versa. Hmm. Okay. I love you guys. Yeah. We love you too. I'm so grateful to be with all of you. So mm. You guys mean everything to me. I was just telling Jeff on the way over here, sort of the beginning of meeting you. Yeah. Yeah. How it all started for me. And Well, in any case, we'll have fun when when uh, you tell us what happened when you solved that symposium. Yeah. 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 And then also we'll follow up on the part. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You get a now, how long have you had this question on the symposium? I forgot to ask you. Uh, specifically the symposium. Yeah. 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 Uh, a month, that? two months since I got Juan, since I reopened Juan's translation. No, no, when you got the question from me. Oh, uh, that was like what, last Friday, I think? Two Fridays. Yeah, yeah, two Fridays ago, right. So you've been frustrated for two Fridays. Uh, not really. I have done some work. I have gone in and oh, done some oh, work. Oh, oh, oh. I just, not enough to feel comfortable to conclude at the moment. So, yeah, I guess. Frustrated. A little bit, but I'm definitely frustrated now, so I'm going back with that fresh frustration yeah. To, yeah. to just... It's good to cultivate the frustration. Jenna, <laughs> 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 you've been silent today. Just listening. Yeah, I noticed. But is that because you're saving some insights for later? No. <laughs> Uh, you're not being a miser and keeping them quiet and to yourself, are you? Nope. Good. Can I make a quick announcement or two? Okay. Um, does anybody need uh, a Rouse? I need um, one. Three fifty oh, or four hey, bucks. Oh, those are the good ones. These, These are, are all in the right. bookstore. I, on that bookstore on Brookhurst, she's going to stay open. Camelot Books. Which one? It's on Brookhurst and Talbert behind she the is? Claim Jumper. Cool. I'll go yes, back. and she does have a small philosophy section. She does look for the Rouse, Pardon and she tries is there to find the. Bookstore there. There's a bookstore there now. Really good. On in the corner of the thing, um, kind of. Talbert and. Talbert and Brookhurst, uh, where the Office Depot Plaza is. There's a. I thought that place was closed. It was. It, no, she thought yeah. she closed it. She used to be. She used to be on right next to right. McDonald's. Yeah. But she oh. moved to, behind the claim jumper. Yeah. But I was up there two yep. weeks ago, and she I, sent an email saying sign on the door closed. Uh, Mondays and Tuesdays are her weekend. Oh. So oh. I picked these up because I figured. Okay, yeah, so there's there's a. Uh, Three fifty and four bucks. Hold it. Easy peasy. Are there more uh, room there? Uh, no, I took them all, baby. Oh, you're offering to sell these to us? So I'll sell them to you for whatever I got them for three fifty or four bucks. They're just mm. it, it was just too hard to pass off. Yeah, these yeah, are the right. these are the, that's the good the, glues. Good the good oh with the good glue too, yeah, brother. That's yeah, why they probably yeah, like yeah, yeah, um, yeah. and the are we gonna go talk with you? Yeah, yeah. The, okay. the other thing I wanted to mention to everybody is I did manage to take and um, Juan's most recent Republic, print it out and bind it, and copy for less will do it for you. It's not cheap. Um, the copying costs thirty-four bucks, and the binding and tax is another ten. So just I FYI. Can get it through Lulu, but it's seventy dollars. Can you get the new one through Lulu? Yeah. Well, seventy. Seventy. Yeah. From uh, Lulu. Oh. Well. Uh, you know, in 
70 yeah. bucks is yeah. more, uh, hey, that's more. Maria said she, just before the seminar, she, yeah. she cha made the one, made those last right. changes. Right. So it's the most recent one on Lulu, good. is what I heard. 40 is still pretty good considering it's one of the best books ever written. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I have a 500 copy page since I had. <laughs> that's <Yeah>. right. <laughs> you have to go to the, the last page to look at the dates. Well, yeah, I just printed it for the seminar, but I couldn't get my printer to print two-sided, and I just oh. gave up. Is it color? So I have no. 486 page no, copy. No, that's not color. Color would be when crazy. Want to go, yeah, it was color. Like I mean, whenever you're ready. Okay. <laughs> oh, color would be easier sometimes. For, for that money, you should get the Lulu. You're going to pay for color. Oh, co oh yeah. so the Lulu is oh, 70 oh, I don't know. I don't know what it okay. is. Color or not. I, I heard 70 bucks from somebody. I'll pay 350 Good. So is there two unclaimed ones that there these are guys two can unclaimed have? ones. Yeah, I was going to say, jump. I need a new one. Go for it, Josh. Go. And go fight I don't have Lynn. the cash on me, so can I pay you yeah. back when... Make sure the pagination is the same, Josh. Mm -hmm. They know? are different. Yeah. Because sometimes it's really irritating. I think <laughs> I've seen uh, Ingmar with that copy, that white mm, copy. Yeah, I think I want this one, actually. Sorry. Yeah. Advising the side ones. And this is, you can see. You. Oh, and it's got a name in it, so I want that one. <laughs> Somebody who worked through it a little. <laughs> yeah. I'll trust their underlining. Has good um, <laughs> juju. Yeah. It's good juju. Oh, that was and my one, and my oh, one in man. school Thank is you. falling apart. So. Yeah. 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 I'm like, yeah. oh, I have to like keep putting it back together. So. Mm. Yeah, Although they're like really old ones sometimes are in good condition. Sometimes what? And sometimes they're not. All right, Jeff. Bring five bucks or something like that. So. Like this one. This is a 2008. Oh, yeah. yeah. All yeah. the way. Better pay for it, too. 95 cents oh. worth every penny. <laughs> 95 cents. I, I didn't buy it originally 95. I got do it you, online. Pierre, do you remember? Steve, since you're so interested in virgins, do you remember this version of the RAS? Oh. oh. That one? That one's... Ah. <laughs> A little yeah. bit, little bit bigger. That's why. I, I don't I, remember that edition. Yeah, Maybe that's when they started nice. printing. Yeah. Pierre, this is the one we've been talking about off and on. I got to go get into it. And mm. um, oh yeah, yeah. You just recently talked about it. Oh. But the Hellenistic and Ro Roman Age by Breyer. He, um, Pierre, is recommending it for the. I guess the last chapter in particular about the Christian. But in general, I'm going to read the whole thing. But. Amazon had it for ten dollars plus four dollars in shipping, hardbound. Otherwise, ninety-five cents. No. If anybody wants it. This is really. What excellent. you? you Where ninety-five yeah. cents? Where? I'll uh, read Amazon. A, I'll read a paragraph. Okay. <laughs> if you want, one I'll already. So, after Socrates, a group of people were called Socratics. Yes. And they followed uh -oh, Socrates. Socrates. Right? So. Mm. For several reasons. I hope so. It is difficult for us to determine the importance of the Socratic school. Mm. To begin with, their prestige is lessened by the influence of Plato and Aristotle. Whoa! Well, we'll hold that one. Okay. okay. Mm. To begin with, right? Uh, pardon me. Furthermore, the writings of the best thinkers are known mainly through collections of titles, hmm. which are themselves in many instances suspect. Hmm. Their doctrines are only known through a doxological summary. Often written in the language of later schools. Hmm. And their lives are noted through collections of antidotes intended for the edification of the reader and indebted more to hagiography than to history. Hagiography is a fancy name for gossip. Yeah, and also it's church <laughs> gossip, isn't it? Yeah, like yeah. religious gossip. Hmm. Um, so, therefore, it supports his vision 
that the prestige of the Socratics is lessened by the influence of Plato and Socrates. Mm -hmm. He just admitted there's no evidence. No evidence. It's all gone. <laughs> but put that aside. But put that aside, and how do we get to his conclusion? That was the point that this material is just gone. All that, that, mm, that that's six hundred years between uh, Plato and uh, Plotinus. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, um, I thought it was more. But that's for the Socratics. They were an important group of people, but it looks like we don't know anything about them. So he has a nice chapter about them. <laughs> but uh, I like his conclusion. Mm. Such then was the diversity of the intellectual currents within Christianity during its first centuries. The gap between the teaching of St. Paul and the work of the man long presumed to be Dionysius the Arapagate is as wide as the gap that separates the preaching of Musanius and Epictetus from the complicated metaphysics of Damascus. Last sentence. During the whole period, there is no semblance of a true Christianity. That is very strange. He wants to say Pseudo-Dionysius and St. Paul are separated by a huge gap? Yeah. I thought... Yeah, he, he, he's got the, made the wrong comparison. Yes. <laughs> but apart from that, it's a good book. Yeah. And they, I saw one on Amazon, hardbound, very good condition, yeah. like $10, plus $4 shipping. Yeah. And the paperback's yeah. like 99 cents. The Hellenistic Age is a good one. They also have... That's just the Hellenistic. Yeah, it's okay. one of those 17th the century. And then he has a Renaissance one, too, right. or something. Right, right, right. Yeah. I was reading about him one day. He was. He spent his whole life doing that. Who's he? Uh, Bre Breyer. Oh Bre yeah. Breyer. Yeah. 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 Very nice guy. He was a major thinker. Of the I've been of wanting to. I was happy to see her get that book. It reminded me. I wanted to get that book, but I wasn't done cultivating my frustration. <laughs> mm. <laughs> 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 you you got to do it. See, you got to cultivate it. Pop that zit. <laughs> <laughs> mm. <coughs> There's a lot of black dust floating around. I thought it was my my eyeballs. You know, like the no, 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 It's just yeah. a little bit of flame Ash. dust. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. It's a shame because we don't get the practices of Socrates. We don't get the practices of Socrates. Like you brought up many times, we get Plato, which is amazing, by the way. I'm very grateful for it. But how can we miss out on like the actual practice of Socrates talking to people in the marketplace, you know, like, and how how he <coughs> then guide them in whatever way he did as his figure that even if we take the way Plato characterizes him in the Apology, that he was the best thing for Athens, that all he did was want them to attend to the perfection of their soul. We don't still see how he did that. So, like, and according to that book, there were a whole group of people called Socratic who yeah. followed him, and we know nothing. Yeah, nothing. Like, and even the titles of their works are suspect. Suspect so is like, not even the title or anything. Or the doxographical, which I guess means some kind of summaries of their yeah. thought systems. Yeah, hagiography. Well, hagiography and doxographical, right? Uh, doxographical, yeah, yeah. yeah but <coughs> gossip. Somebody's interpretation. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if this makes any difference or anything, but it's like Plato would have been Socratic. I mean, wasn't he following around Socrates? Yeah, sure. Yeah, but his way of exploring, yeah. like, or the perfection out. in somebody's soul is, like, everyone. very intellectual sure. and abstract. Right. Plato? Yeah. Whenever. You know, like... It's kind of, I just can't it's great, there's this thing oh. called the Allegory Cave. Now how does somebody go through it? In the real practice mm. of it. Mm. It's kind of like the dream study stuff. Like we know it's there, right. but nobody right. nobody shows it, right? Like, 
Right. Let me show the method, really, like. I didn't see them going to the thing Well, I guess it goes back to that problem of, like, Jesus and Christ. Go for it. 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 Oh, I was going Are you available this week? Oh. Are you available to have talk? I'd like to continue the dialogue that we started at Panera. Sure. Right? So, sure. Uh,